Imagine yourself in this place a thousand years ago. What would you see? A boggy, soggy wasteland. Not much you recognize. A few things like the lake called Balmamir, now an urban district of Amsterdam, and some waterways, later known as Rotoplast, the I and the Amstel, which gave its name to this district, Amstel Land. Peoples from the north moved down to Amstel Land. The soil was too boggy to build on, so they had to drain it. They dug dishes at right angles to the rivers. Using the peat they had dug out, they raised the land between the ditches. Where later the city of Amsterdam would be built, there was still only peat land. In 1250, the sea level rose. Tidal waves burst the dikes, flooded the land, covering it in water. The lakes Haarlemmermeer and Vatergrasmeer were formed. In around 1200, dikes and dams had been built in many parts of Holland. Linked together, they offered protection from the constant threat of flooding. The first villages appeared in the Amsterdam area. Sloten, Diemen, Schellingwalde and Ransdorp, all probably older than the city itself. The name Amsterdammer appears for the first time in around 1270. It referred to a few houses built on wedges of raised ground called terps or along dikes on either side of the river Amstel. In around 1250, a dam was built to join the banks of the river. This dam linked the row of dikes running from the Eye to Nieuwendijk, Warmustraat and Zeedijk. Shortly after the dam was constructed, Count Floris of Holland granted the town the right to levy tolls, a kind of tax. This was to be the start of stormy episodes. In the 14th century, fortified city walls were constructed. Soon after that, the river Amstel was made a The river mouth was initially much wider than today's Dumrak Street. Wharfs were built and warehouses were constructed along the east side where the boggy land had been filled in. This was at the back of today's Varmustrad. Things moved quickly. By 1380, the city area included the old side Achterburgwal, part of the city wall, today's Grimburgwal, the Spau, then a waterway, and today's Spau Street. The building extended as far as today's Hasseltstek, midway between Dam Square and Central Station. In less than 50 years, the walled city was bursting its seams. So in 1425, it was decided to extend the city and to dig out a completely new canal to surround it, called a Singelkracht, from the Dutch single, meaning a belt or girdle. It had become customary to construct moats or canals with fortified embankments around the river Amstel. The new encircling single canal was completed in 1450. The boundaries of the medieval city were now today's single as far as the Munt Tower, then along Klovenier's Burgwal, past today's university buildings, and Gelderse Kader towards the eye. A new canal was built, shaped like a belt or girdle. It followed the route of today's Herengracht. When this was finished, an even larger section of the River Amstel lay inside the city walls. The gateway building, known as St. Anthony's, later to become a warehouse, was now enclosed inside the city. The district today known as the New Markt, the New Market, changed from being a neighborhood of small workshops into a dwelling area. In the waters of the eye, Islands were created to provide a harbour and shipyards. The best known of these islands is Rapenburg, where later the Dutch East India Company was to build a shipyard and warehouses. A population explosion took place in Amsterdam in the early 17th century. The city needed to expand urgently. In 1612, it was decided that two new canals should be dug out with a completely new canal encircling them. It took 13 years to complete this section of the canal. Now, the three major canals, Heerengracht, Kaisersgracht and Prinsengracht, arched round from Brouwersgracht, 
too light. At the same time, the district called the Jordan was built, consisting of many narrow streets and small canals. Towards the west, behind the city gate of Haarlem Port, a harbour district of Amsterdam developed in the waters of the Eye. The population went on exploding, and by 1658, the new streets were so full, another city extension was needed. Starting at the Leitzerkracht, the canals were extended towards the river Amstel, and also further eastwards towards the Eye. The city walls were also extended, and new bastions were constructed, each one surmounted by a cannon. Large artificial islands were created in the Eye to provide shipyards, and named Kattenburg, Wittenburg and Ostenburg. It had taken less than 50 years to completely change the face of Amsterdam. Major roads were constructed in the city between Leitzerkracht and the river Amstel. Examples are Utrechtsestraat and Leitzerstraat, still there today. Lining the banks of the three major canals, wealthy merchants built mini palaces. Once past the river Amstel, however, buildings went up more slowly. In 1682, the neighborhood known as the Plantage got underway. This was intended as a recreation area and had welcoming taverns and the Hortus Botanicus garden with its exotic plants. There were no more city extensions in the 18th century. Around 1800, building in Amsterdam entered a period of stagnation. It wasn't until the 1870s that things started to pick up again. In the meantime, Amsterdam lay enclosed within its belt, the waters of the Singelfront, which today runs along the Nassaukade, the Stadhouderskade, past the Rijksmuseum, and along the Maritzkade.